How's it going? Mark here with NTX Fishing. Yeah, I know I promised you guys I would do a review of the Okuma Azores uh, 80S. Um, but I don't know if you saw my last video. I kind of fell off the boat. So this is the only thing I have left. That's all I've got left. So, you know. I was going to do a review on this thing and uh, and tell you how smooth it is and what a great reel it is and how good it is at uh, reeling in big fish. But, uh, you know, I mean, all I can tell you about is my experience. I can't. Oh, wait, no, that's not right. Look, I, <laughs> I liked it so much. I went and bought another one. And that's not the best part. Here, check it out. Look here at this. This is an extremely good rod. In fact, the, the only thing that's not good about it is probably the reel. <laughs> now the reel is good too, but the seats are extremely good quality. Um, the handle is extremely good quality. And the rod is extremely good quality. They all feel good in your hand. Um, and there, it's a little bit on the heavy side, but you need that when you're rolling in big fish. So I'm a big fan. I really, I really enjoyed it. And I was sad to lose it. I don't know if you saw my snook video. If you haven't seen that, uh, that snook fishing video, you need to go check that out right now because uh, I fell off the boat. And if you've missed that hilarity, then you need to go check it out right now. There was a big fish attached to this setup right here, and uh, it got away. And I kind of had to make a choice whether I uh, held on to the fish or held on to the boat. And I let go of my rod, and it went to the bottom. But now let's, let's talk about the reel. Let's talk about the reel. So the question is, should you buy this reel? Uh, the Saragossa is probably a better reel. Um, but for the money, I don't think you can go wrong with this thing. This is all aluminum. Okay, every bit of this reel is aluminum. It's very, very, very smooth. The drag is very, very, very smooth. It's, um, it's a sweetie. And I liked it so much that instead of buying a Saragossa or really going crazy and buying a Stella or something like that, I bought another one just like this. Um, also because it has sentimental value because my Florida trip was a big deal to me and I just love this thing uh, I love that rod too and uh, even I mean I can't I don't want to put words in, in somebody else's mouth but uh, even the captain was complimentary of my setup he liked it he used it and he enjoyed it a big snook and fairly good sized uh, Jack Creval this was more than enough I mean, really this is kind of a this is like light tuna gear, you know, this is a, an 80S and their 80 series is about the size of a 20,000 Shimano Stella 20,000. So, you know, the 80, 20,000 if you're into Shimano, the 90 would be like their 30,000. So this is a big reel and all aluminum, it weighs like 2.2 pounds. But when you've got a good size fish on there that, that give, puts a little pressure on that uh, pin carnage too, you don't really notice the weight anymore. And fishing the way we were with heavy mullet, like a pound of bait, and throwing it like lures, this, this setup worked great. It was fantastic. I can't wait to go back and do it again. I can't say enough good things about Florida. This is my Graceland, sir. And I can't say enough good things about Okuma. Okuma makes good stuff. A lot of people were asking me, um, you know, uh, on one of my videos, I did the Ugly Stick, a review of the Ugly Stick GX2. And I was talking about how for the money, you really can't go wrong. Well, the higher end Okuma reels are kind of that way. For the money, you really can't go wrong. They're kind of like the Ugly Sticks. You don't have the same feel as some of the more expensive reels. But quality-wise, durability-wise, the drag on these things... Uh, the, the construction, the, the smoothness, um, they're really sweet. So this guy right here, 
Highly recommended. I didn't want to say I recommended it before I got out there and actually tried it. But while I was out there, I had a chance to try out some really nice Saragossas and things like that. And um, I'm not going to lie. They feel better. They're lighter. Um, but also, those weren't 20,000s, I don't think. Those were more like uh, 6,000s or 8,000 size reels, I think. And this is a, more comparable to like the 20,000. So it was a smaller reel and it has, it's going to have a different feel. Smaller reel, smaller rod, different feel. As far as what I think of it, like if I have to do a direct comparison, if I had to choose between this and the Saragossa of the same size, I don't know that I'd pick the Saragossa just because of the price. Okay? Because... I might like the feel of the Saragossa a lot. And the, you, you, don't, you don't have that positive clicker like you do on the Saragossa. Um, I think this one's geared down quite a bit, but see again, this is the larger reel. So I think you get a four to one um, gear ratio on this. And that, uh, that's for reeling in big fish. You know, I think the Saragossa has got like a five or six. It's a lot faster. But if you watch my snook video, you'll see on the Saragossa, if I've got pressure on a fish, I could do one crank, maybe half a crank, three quarters of a crank, and that would bring, that would bring the rod from here to here in just that little bit of time, right? Whereas it might be two cranks with this. So you could definitely pull in a bigger fish with this, but this, again, is equivalent to about a 20,000 size a Shimano reel. And I would, I would think that this would turn out to be more durable uh, in the long term. You know, unfortunately, the first one went, is at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. I'll never get it back. Okay. Um, so I can't tell you. I'm just going to have to keep fishing these things and, and see. I'm going to start taking these things out to the lake. I'm going to try and put some big gar on them. Because as you know, I live in North Texas, not Florida, and I don't have that opportunity all the time. I may be wrong, but I feel like this setup, you know, this is basically light tuna gear. Um, I think I could pull in a pretty good sized fish on this. You really do have that impression when you hook up on this thing. I think the largest fish we caught out there um, was a snook about, he, he estimated it to be between uh, 36 and 38 inches long, <clears throat> somewhere in that 20 to 25 pound category. And, um, it's nothing on this setup. It feels, it feels like you're bass fishing. I mean, yeah, you got to chase your fish around, but pressure wise, it's nothing. Now, when you switch to your smaller setup, kind of a medium setup, yeah, it's a heck of a fight. It really is. But on this, not much is going on there. You really don't feel like you're, uh, it's putting up much of a fight on this. It's almost unfair. You know, he can put you on some 40 pound jacks and that's kind of what I was hoping for was a big Jack Creval somewhere in the 30 to 40 pound range. And <clears throat> I think that would be a pretty good fight even on something like this, especially for someone like me, who's not that experienced when it comes to uh, saltwater fishing. I've done my fair share, but not that style of fishing, not usually from a boat like that, a small boat, and um, you know, not that targeted. I think it, it did well, and like I said, even the captain liked it, and uh, he enjoyed it. He checked it out, and uh, you know, he was happy that I already had it rigged up and everything, I already had 80-pound mono on there and everything. He really... He really liked it and um, he fished it himself. He caught fish on this thing and was complimentary of it. And he has some very nice equipment. Now my stuff, I'm not saying that this is uh, as nice as the stuff that Max had, but I think it held up fine. And also uh, I did another video with this from the pier. We didn't catch anything that big on the pier, but it handled really well. You know, I think if I would have got a, a small shark or something on here, I think this would do just fine. Where it's going to suffer is in the weight category, okay? 
I mean, this weighs as much as, as probably three Saragosas. This is, this is a heavy son of a gun. I don't know. I don't have the spec sheets in front of me right now to let you know for sure, but it's a big, big sucker. If you're not very strong in the upper body, I would not recommend this setup. The Pin Carnage 2 and this 80 series uh, Azores. It's just, it's heavy, okay? And there's nothing finicky about it. There's nothing finesse about it. It's, it's, not, it's not like your bass gear. This stuff here is big. That's why I wanted to show you. I mean, here's a dime, all right? So you have something to compare it to, all right? Here's a cigarette lighter, all right? It's a big guy, okay? There's nothing small about this. Even your handle, look at the size of that handle. I mean, compared to a cigarette lighter. I mean, do you see what I mean? This is a substantial piece of kit. It's 2.2 uh, pounds. It's got 44 pounds of drag. What else can I say? I liked it so much that I went out and bought another one. <clears throat> uh, to be honest, I didn't buy it. I thought it was gone forever. And I was actually very upset because this trip to Florida was a big deal to me. Um, being able to go out on this uh, trip with Max and, and do the snook fishing that we did um, has been kind of a lifelong dream of mine. I'm not a rich guy and uh, I don't get many opportunities like that. And when I lost this, this was going to be kind of sentimental, and, and it, it is kind of sentimental. I wanted to keep this as kind of a trophy from, from that experience. I didn't get to take any of my fish home, but at least I'd have this rod and reel to show that I had done that and accomplished that. So what I'm getting at is my wife ordered this, the rod and the reel, while we were still in Florida. And when we got back in, it was sitting here waiting on me. And I'm going to tell you, that's one amazing woman right there. Not every wife would do that. And uh, I'm glad to have it back. And we're going to use it some more. We're going to get out there. We're going to, we're going to light it up on this thing again. Maybe get something a little bit bigger. May, maybe even more exciting. We might put a shark on here. You know, maybe a black tip, something like that. Um, bull shark. I don't know. Do you think this will, think this will handle it? You think... You think this reel and that rod set up over there can take it? I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Look at this. Look at this. Have y'all seen this rod seat? You seen the construction of this rod? I mean, it's pretty heavy duty stuff. Look at this handle. I mean, it's, it's just gorgeous. You're down here on the end. Okay. Tells you what it's rated for. Um, I uh, I think so. I think it'll handle it. If not, at least we're gonna be able to see how durable it is, right? But I don't know, I've seen some guys reel on some black tips and some pretty big uh, bull sharks on lighter gear than this before. I think some of my ugly sticks could handle that. That's the Azores. 80 series right there. Do I like it? Very much. Their uh, dual force drag system works extremely well. I didn't know exactly what kind of pressure to expect, so Captain set the drag on this and it was perfect. Way more than I needed. I mean, 44 pounds of drag is a ton. I know there are some uh, Saltigas and stuff that have like 60 or 70 pounds of drag. That's a lot. GTs, stuff like that. Maybe you need that much drag. I don't think so, though. I think 44 is plenty. Take a 44-pound weight and attach it to your fishing pole and try and pick it up. If you're putting that much force on your pole and your reel, um, yeah, we're talking deep sea. You know, we're talking heavy duty at that point. 44 is a lot. Um, I still think even with 44 pounds of drag, if you work, you could get a, you know, a five-gallon bucket full of paint. Up, up over the side of the boat with this thing, and if not, up to the boat. This would make a great yellow fin setup. I don't know. I want to say, yeah, you know, 
in the next year or so we'll have this thing out and we'll be fishing that way. Honestly, that's totally up to you guys. If the channel takes off and we start doing well, I might have an excuse to go on a trip like that. But until then, um, we'll just have to settle for what I can get around here. I think if I got a seven foot gar on this sucker, that'd be a pretty good test. But I'm here to tell you that a seven foot gar is not gonna fight as hard, probably, as that uh, 36 to 38 uh, inch um, snook, to be honest. You know, this is coming from a Texas boy and you know, uh, we got some big hard fighting fish around here, but that big snook uh, pulls and those, those, uh, those jacks pull very hard. Um, pound for pound, 10 times as hard as any bass, I would, I would say, uh, depending on their mood. Apparently when we were out there that day, uh, they were really jazzed up for whatever reason, you know, had water temperatures in the high 80s. And uh, these fish came to fight and fight they did. They fought hard. But with this setup, like I said, it wasn't no big deal. I'm happy to have it back. I'm happy to be back. And uh, let's, go, let's go out and, and really test this thing out this year, this, this, uh, for the rest of the year, and see what we can get. Every time I pick up this setup, I don't keep this rod and reel with my other stuff. Why? Because it reminds me of Florida, and I get a little bit emotional and sad every time I see it, because I miss the place that much. What an experience. I just want you guys to know that I'm not sponsored by Okuma or Pin. Um, a lot of people would say, oh my God, you put an Okuma reel on a pin rod. Well, you know, I kind of like the Okuma reels. I've got a bunch of them. I like pin rods. Their reels, not so much. The one thing that you will notice about Okuma is you get 90, 80, 90% of the strength that you get from a pin reel with about 75% of the smoothness that you get out of a Shimano reel combined. So you get a little bit of the strength and the, and the smoothness put together. It's kind of a, if you had your pin on this side, that would be your pickup truck. You had your Stella over here, that would be like your Ferrari. This is like, um, you know, it's not a pickup truck, it's not a Ferrari, it's a Camaro. It's a Mustang. Okay, so it's a little heavier than a Ferrari. It's not as dependable as a pickup truck, but it's got lots of horsepower and it's dependable enough and it's strong enough and it handles pretty good. So yeah, it's right there in the middle. That's why I like it. Most people don't go out and buy Ferraris, okay? Mo most of us can't afford a Ferrari. Most of us, uh, don't drive pickup trucks, although I drive a pickup truck, but not most, not everybody drives a pickup. Not everybody wants one. What do we drive? We drive SUVs, a sports utility vehicle. What is that? Well, it's something in between. We get enough room for our stuff, but yet we want a little bit of sportiness. We need the, the horsepower and a little bit of handling, and a little bit of fun. So we end up with a compromise. And that's what this is. This is the compromise. It's not a piece of industrial equipment but it's darn close. It's not a Ferrari for the racetrack, but it's darn close. It does all of those jobs really well, and that's why I go with the Okuma reels. All except for the Trio. Looked at the Trio, you'll notice that there's hardly any body to the Trio, and they have a, apparently a tendency to strip the gears out a lot, and that I'm not for that. That's their ultralight stuff. If you want an ultralight, I would recommend the uh, Okuma Avenger series. All right. They're extremely cheap. We're talking 20, 30 bucks, maybe 40. I don't know. Somewhere in that range. Very cheap. They hold up really well. That's what my daughter's fishing right now. And I like it a lot. I have two bait feeders, the 55 uh, bait feeder. The reason I bought those is a captain recommended them to me. And he started using them for all of his clients, not because they're cheap and disposable, but because they outlasted the more expensive stuff. Okuma has an image problem. Uh, they, they make good products, but nobody knows about it. Uh, Scott, Scott Martin knows about it. He's sponsored by Okuma. And if you are any kind of a fisherman, you know who Scott Martin is. That's Roland Martin's son, right? He fishes Okuma tackle and he seems to win a lot of tournaments and he has no problem with it. In fact, 
I've seen some uh, TV shows where he's using this very real right here. And he likes it a lot. So, now bear that in mind. Okuma makes good products, but nobody knows about it. So, they try and put as much quality as they can into their reels because they have something to prove. Okay, they really do. Whereas Shimano and Pin, I mean, these are household names. People know them, and they, when you say fish and reel, you, most of us probably think Shimano, don't we? When you say high end reel, first thing, what is it? Saltiga, right? You think, oh, a Daiwa. Pin, uh, you don't think Okuma, most of us. I think we should. Although, if they ever do get as popular as the other brands, they're going to be just as expensive. But that's really the only main difference that I see is the price. The quality's in here. These are good quality reels, maybe more so than the others. For example, if I was to go out and buy a 20,000 uh, Stella, for example, okay, um, it's going to be twelve, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400. I could buy a whole pile of these for that for less than the price of the service. And that's another thing you may not realize. Those reels have to be serviced. All reels have to be serviced at some point. To service that thing, okay, is going to cost more than this reel. All right, we're talking close to 200 bucks. All right? And I'm not, I'm not about that. It kind of takes the fun out of it for me. If I had lost a $2,000 rig with a, with a Saragossa on it or a Stella, I mean to say, or a Saltiga um, in Florida, I wouldn't have been just kind of down and depressed. I, I, I'd be looking for a noose. I mean, not literally, but I mean, that, that's a lot of money, y'all. I mean, a thousand bucks for your reel and, you know, 500 to $800 for your rod. I mean, after you put line on the thing and, you know, your whole rig, I mean, two grand just fell in the water. It's gone. And I don't know about you guys. I'm not made of money. I don't have a money tree out in the backyard. I can't, I can't afford that. Even if I could, though, I might still buy this because they're that good. And not everybody uses these things. If you don't go down to the pier and just see a ton of these things, you'll see a lot of used high-end equipment. Uh, expensive stuff and you'll see a lot of cheap Walmart stuff um, you don't see the Okumas but you should because these are good reels they're good reels when I was out in Florida I took this this thing into the surf I got it covered in sand um, not this particular one obviously but it got rained on it rained every day in Florida sometimes two or three times a day you know I took five showers in one day the uh, reel got a shower every day it got salt all over it, inside of it, around it. I mean, it's sealed, but I mean, it never missed a beat. It never, the feel of it never changed. It still felt just as smooth, just as, just as amazing as this one. Can't say enough good things about it. Now, all that being said, I like spinning reels. Now, my buddy Bob, if you, if you guys have watched our channel before and you need to check that out, he is not a spinning reel guy. He's not into these uh, kind of open face, clicky bells and all that stuff. That's not him. If you want to see the best uh, bait casting setup, we're going to have Bob in here in the studio. And we're going to hear from him, see what he has to say about it. Um, that's what he's into. That's what he does. I think his father's been fishing some of these reels for over 30 years. So we may have some 30-year-old examples of uh, these reels and, and, and some stories to tell about some big fish and some great reels. And uh, be looking forward to that video because that'll be coming out pretty soon. So before we can get Bob in here, I just wanted to let you know uh, and how it did. Because um, I promised I would do a review of this and I never got around to it. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, does it not look smooth? I mean, look at it. And does it not? Does it not look like smoothness? And it looks pretty smooth to me. I mean, especially for a big reel, right? Not gritty, not crunchy, crisp, positive, very solid. Open it up, very solid. There's no binding, right? Let's see that. Let's try that again. 
No, no binding. Very solid. Some people don't like that automatic bell, but positive, high quality. There's no movement or play. So, like I said, not perfect, but close. Close enough for me. Anyway, this is Mark with NTX Fishing saying peace. Please subscribe, and thanks a lot for watching. This is my Graceland, sir.